Police Crime Division. Thank you for being here. We are also joined by our local CBP leadership from the Office of Field Operations, Border Patrol, and Air Marine Operations. I would like to thank you for your leadership. As the nation's border security agency, Customs and Border Protection is on the front line against fentanyl. Over the last several years, we have continually evolved and adapted our counter fentanyl strategy to match the sophistication, innovation, and relentlessness of the criminal organizations responsible for trafficking fentanyl across our borders. From agents working with our state and local partners to surging officers and resources to our southwest border ports of entry, to increasing our detection capabilities at our international mail facilities, to conducting operations targeting fentanyl supply chains at airport cargo facilities and along the border. We are constantly enhancing how and where we combat this issue. Our ability to adapt and respond is having an impact on this fight. We are disrupting the fentanyl supply chains. We are stopping the precursors and production equipment coming into and transiting the U.S. And we are doubling down on our efforts to find and seize fentanyl at and between our ports of entry. Last year, CBP seized more than 27,000 pounds, nearly double the year before, of fentanyl, re representing over a billion pills. The cartels are consistently evolving. Change is constant in their business model, one that solves pure evil for profit. So the scope and enormity of this issue demands an approach that constantly evolves to defeat these heartless networks. We are entering the next phase in our fight against fentanyl. We are going over, we are going after the plaza bosses who organizations are responsible for virtually everything that is smuggled into the U.S. via the southwest border. This is a natural choke point within the smuggling networks that occur at U.S. ports of entry and between. By targeting them for enforcement action, we can directly impact their operations and ability to track fent traffic fentanyl into the United States, which makes its way into communities all across our country. So today, I am proud that CBP is launching the Plaza Spike Campaign, a multi-agency targeted effort to further disrupt the fentanyl supply chain by going after the plazas and plaza bosses the profit from the smuggling of fentanyl, its precursors, and the equipment used to produce it, as well as other transnational criminal activities. We are also going to target anyone associated with these plaza bosses that help facilitate their activities. We know that more than 90% of all narcotics smuggled into the United States flow through and, under, and are under the control of border plaza leadership. A plaza territory operated by a cartel in Mexico. The boss who controls the plaza is responsible for the legal operations, like the smuggling of drugs, weapons, and humans. The plazas profit from this illegal activity either by directly running the smuggling operations or receiving a tax from other criminal organizations operating within the plaza's territory. Each plaza is deline delineated by geographic or man-made boundaries, like roads or train tracks. The first phase of Operation Plaza Spike will target the Nogales Plaza which includes Nogales, Mexico, and the Arizona city of the same name where we are today. We know that this plaza is under the control of Sinaloa, the Sinaloa Cartel Plaza boss named Sergio Valenzuela, Van, Valenzuela, also known as Gio, and his organization. The U.S. Department of Treasury's Office of Foreign Assets Control identified GEO as a significant foreign narcotics trafficker pursuant to the Foreign Narcotics, narcotics Kingpin Designation Act. In 2021, the Southern District of California unsealed a grand jury indictment and warrant for arrest against GEO for charges of conspiracy to distribute 
controlled substances intended for importation, conspiracy to import controlled substances, and conspiracy to distribute controlled substances. As of today, GEO remains a fugitive. The Nogales Plaza, under GEO's control, is responsible for 44% of all fentanyl CBP seizures coming into the United States. We would also like to congratulate the government of Mexico on their recent success inside these key drug territories with the arrest of a key associate of GEO, Gilberto Martinez Rentriera, a.k.a. 50. 50 was also designated by the Treasury Department in September 2021 alongside GEO. Just as the men and women of CBP are steadfast in the fight against fentanyl, we will be unrelenting in our pursuit of those people and organizations that threaten the safety and security of our people and our country. CBP will be focusing on the illegal exportations of weapons from the U.S. to the cartels in Mexico, severely hampering their ability to arm their operations that drive chaos on the other side of our shared border. In addition to enforcement efforts at the border, CBP and its partners will be using a variety of actions and authorities against GEO and his organization's operations. Like everything we do, this enhanced approach will only be successful by working together with our partners. That's why we are also announcing the expansion of our interagency Operation Apollo that focuses on partnerships between us, other federal government agencies, and state and local law enforcement agencies from California into Arizona. We are also taking the successes and lessons learned from our Southern California operation and will replicate the same within the Arizona corridor. Here in Arizona, we will utilize assets from all CBP components, our federal, state, local, tribal, and territorial law enforcement partners, and various intelligence organizations to interdict finished fentanyl products, illicit precursor chemicals, adulterants, pill presses, equipment, illicit proceeds, and weapons, and arrest those that are responsible. This new phase of Operation Apollo is a shared effort to illuminate and understand the networks, logistics, routes, and tactics, techniques, and procedures used by transnational criminal organizations operating within Arizona. We're flattening out the intelligence and using our unique position and authorities to support our partners. That means that the intelligence we collect during this operation will also provide actionable, targetable insights for follow-up enforcement operations. All of these efforts leverage CBP's position on the front line against fentanyl and are just our latest attempt and efforts to disrupt criminal supply networks and keep fentanyl out of our nation's communities. Thank you to the men and women of CBP and to our close collaboration with our great partners. This campaign will have a tremendous impact on the cartel's ability to smuggle this dangerous drug across our borders. We are also calling on the public to provide any relevant information that, may, that they may have about GEO, his movements, and his operation. You'll hear more about that from the DEA in a few moments. At the end of the day, this is all about us securing our shared border while stopping violence, drugs, and those who are profiting from human suffering. We are unrelenting in this mission, and I want to be perfectly clear. If you are making or moving fentanyl across our borders, if you are responsible for the poisoning of our people, we know who you are, and we are bringing the full force of the federal government to shut you down and deliver justice. This is a fight we take personally on one we simply will not lose. Thank you, and I would like to turn it over to my colleague from the Drug Enforcement Administration, James Nunnally. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Commissioner Milner. I'm proud to represent the United States Drug Enforcement Administration today's announcement. 
Again, my name is James Nunnally, and I'm the Deputy Chief of Operations at DEA. It will today take a strategic whole-of-government approach from the agencies operating on the front lines to prevail over the greatest drug threat facing our country. It's fentanyl. Each one of our organizations plays a unique role and provides vital areas of expertise in this fight. DEA investigates drugs, cr drug crimes across the globe. Our top operational priority is targeting the criminal organizations that are responsible for pouring dangerous and deadly drugs into our communities like fentanyl and methamphetamine. Last year, DEA seized over 377 million deadly doses of fentanyl. That's more than enough fentanyl to kill every American. The majority of fentanyl that we've seized and the other dangerous drugs entered the United States from Mexico, crossing various points along the southwest border. The DEA welcomes the Department of Homeland Security's Plaza Spike Strategy to focus resources and expertise on the U.S.-Mexico border, as the border plays a critical role in transnational crime. DEA's mission to save lives is rooted in two lines of effort, action and awareness. We are laser focused on defeating the Sinaloa and Jalisco cartels, the two organizations causing the worst drug crisis in our nation's history. We have taken a no network approach to attack every part of the cartel's global supply chain. We have added a strategic layer to our investigations by creating three counter threat teams. One team is dedicated to the Sinaloa cartel, one team to the Jalisco cartel, and one to target the global illicit finance networks employed by both cartels. The counter threat teams have mapped the presence of these two Mexico-based cartels in nearly 50 countries across the world. And make no mistake, they have associates throughout the United States who are distributing their poison. DEA is determined to attack these networks at every level. We start at the beginning of the supply chain with the Chinese chemical companies responsible for supplying the ingredients needed to make fentanyl. Last year, for the first time, DEA and DOJ charged 12 Chinese chemical companies and 24 Chinese nationals for trafficking fentanyl. Last year, we also charged 28 members of Los Chapitos, 10 of whom are in custody, including El Chapo's son. Known as the pioneer of fentanyl, Ovillo Guzman Lopez was extradited to the United States last fall. Knowing who the greatest threats are and understanding how and where they operate is key to DEA strategy. As named in our indictment with the Southern District of California, Nogales Plaza boss Sergio Valenzuela Valenzuela, also known as Gio, is believed to be responsible for conspiring to manufacture and distribute fentanyl for importation excuse me, distribute fentanyl, methamphetamine, and heroin for importation into the United States from Mexico on behalf of the Sinaloa cartel. In addition to our continued work with our CBP and HSI partners in Nogales, DEA will utilize all the assets of our Sinaloa counter threat team to bring GEO to justice. Today we are announcing the addition of a line, tip line, for the public that is dedicated to information related to Geo and his associates. Anyone can call or text 619-540-6912 and provide information anonymously. Lastly, DEA is also focused on advancing awareness in our communities to reverse the devastating drug poisoning epidemic. We are inspired every day by families from across the country who have experienced loss due to, drug, due to a drug poisoning and have turned their pain into action and advocacy. We encourage every family to talk about the dangers of drugs. Do not take pills that were not given to you by your medical provider and do not buy pills on social media. This is a crisis that is going to take all of us working together to solve. Together we can and will succeed. Commissioner Miller, thank you for your continued partnership and commitment to helping us save lives. I will now turn it over to HSI. Good 
Good morning. Buenos dias. Thank you, James. Thank you, Commissioner, for the invite, for hosting this important event. I'm Ricardo Mayoral with Homeland Security Investigations, or HSI. I'm currently the Assistant Director for Countering Transnational Organized Crime Division. I oversee in this role all the HSI's efforts to combat transnational organized crime, which, as you might imagine, keeps all of us very busy, especially here in Nogales. I only have a few minutes to speak, so I'll keep my remarks brief. As a border state, Arizona is prime for all smuggling activity carefully coordinated by the Sinaloa cartel. It won't come as a surprise when I tell you that cartel operatives are opportunistic, greedy, and have sophisticated communications networks. These networks will move drugs and groups of people to locations where they feel there's a high probability of successful entry without law enforcement detection. As, a, as the principal investigative agency within the Department of Homeland Security, our goal is to investigate so we can identify, disrupt, and dismantle significant transnational criminal organizations involved, involved in all smuggling activities. Here in Arizona, for that reason, HSI has dedicated groups assigned to investigate drug smugglers, weapons traffickers, bulk cash smuggling, and human smuggling, to just name a few of our investigative groups. The TCOs, or transnational criminal organizations, that oversee smuggling activities are well organized, ruthless, and have no regard for people's well-being. You just heard about plaza bosses and how they control different corridors along the southern border, not just here in Arizona, but southern California, New Mexico, and of course, southern Texas. The Sinaloa cartel, like all the other cartels, are in a smuggling space to make money, period. They don't care about anything other than those who attempt to stand in their way. For that reason, federal law enforcement needs to continue to work together so we can leverage our distinctive and unique authorities against the cartels. The Sinaloa cartel, like other cartels, are in the smuggling space to do us harm and to push their poison to the American people. Let me conclude my remarks by noting that here in Southern Arizona, the law enforcement community, whether it's federal, state, tribal, are committed to stopping drugs from entering our country. I also want to take this opportunity to thank our foreign law enforcement partners. HSI has a long-standing relationship with the government of Mexico, and I want to take this opportunity to thank the government of Mexico for their continued support. Thank you again for giving me the opportunity to address you all, and now I'll cede the floor to the commissioner. Thank you. Hi, good morning. This is Matt Ruiz from Univision Arizona. My question is, um, how is this operation going to be implemented with those U.S. citizens that are crossing drugs through our southern border, specifically in Cochise County, where we see a large amount of teenagers, you know, driving across uh, smuggling drugs and humans? Well, good morning, and thank you for the question. Uh, we are going to continue to work with our state and local partners our federal partners uh, to identify, interdict, and appropriately bring those folks to justice. But just as importantly, we're going to identify the transnational criminal organizations that are responsible and exploit that information to ensure that we're going after the entire network and the entire supply chain. Good morning, yes. Check, check, let's try that again. Fish, uh, I'll keep it and hope it continues. Uh, why is now the right time to announce this new plan? Why is now the right time to announce this new plan to put this extra focus on the plaza bosses and why will this enhance your efficiency going forward compared to what your strategy was in previous years? Thank you, Brian. Good morning, and I appreciate the question. So if I could, I'll, I'll take a little step back. 
Obviously, as you point out, we've been working with our federal partners and state and local partners for a number of years uh, to go after fentanyl and those responsible. But last year, what we did is we seized resources down to the southwest border and specifically, sorry, I have a drone right behind you, and specifically into um, the, the San Diego sector and through operations like uh, Blue Lotus, Four Horsemen, Artemis, we nearly doubled our fentanyl seizures, not only at the southwest border locations, but Artemis focused at our ports of entry, so we started looking at the complete supply chains of the pill presses coming into the U.S., the precursors transiting the U.S., and we started using that intelligence to put the pictures together with our, with our federal partners, and we realized that as we took this uh, all-of-government approach that we needed to bring in our state and local partners even closer. So uh, we launched Operation Apollo at the beginning of this fiscal year or in October to flatten out the information sharing with our federal partners, our state and local partners across the entire fentanyl supply chain. And as we always knew, as we learned our lessons in California, we were going to move uh, Apollo itself to Arizona. Um, and uh, one of the things that, that we've been looking at for some time, and I tasked uh, uh, our uh, Southwest Border Intelligence Center here in Tucson to do, is to map out the plaza bosses and the plazas from Texas to California. Now we have that information and we've been working with uh, DEA and HSI on those plazas for a number of years, but we wanted to elevate that strategy to tr to start to try to deny access of the narcotics into the U.S. by taking out those plazas, the logistics, the transport, the precursors, and the weapons going southbound. So it's really about tying all the pieces together, bringing our operational capabilities together, ensuring that we have the right touch points with our federal, state, and local partners, and surging the appropriate resources so the men and women of CBP, HSI, and DEA are being appropriately supported. Okay, uh, morning to everyone. I have a quick question. I think I'm going to have the same problem as. <laughs> no, but uh, what is the level of involvement of the Mexican authorities? We, we have seen some operations in Nogales, Sonora. The arrest that you, just, that you guys just uh, said, and all and, and other operations that we have seen here in the Mexican side. What is that level of involvement? And the other one, if they arrest the person of interest that you have right now in Mexico, will you be seeking to get in it for, uh, to the U.S. to, to face justice? So uh, to, to answer that question um, directly on the first part of your question, we work very closely with the government of Mexico and have for a number of years, as my colleague at Homeland Security Investigation uh, indicated. Um, on, uh, identifying the transnational criminal organizations and bringing them to justice. Remember, these, org these are the same organizations that are smuggling currency and weapons into Mexico and causing the violence uh, that they're seeing uh, south. So we've been working very closely on ensuring that we're seizing those weapons as well. Thank you. John, hey, John Washington with Arizona Luminaria. Um, uh, Two-part question. One is, um, in, in short, like what's what's new here? How does this differ from the kingpin strategy, or even some slightly different iteration of that, like choke point strategy? And and like, do you see foresee possible problems if you take out Geo or any other plaza bosses? Won't there be the same atomization, potential infill of someone else coming in, and and potentially increased violence? And and the second part, uh, another uh, what's new here is is what is the significance of this for um, the different. Uh, agencies. Why is this um, important to y'all to work together in these these three different agencies? Well, first of all, we've been working with uh, CBP has been working with HSI and DEA for for a long time, and the importance of this relationship cannot go understated. Second of all, I think I explained it a little bit before. It's not just the Plaza Boss strategy. It's about the access to the U.S. It's about the precursors, it's about the pill presses, it's about the supply chain at our seaports, our airports of entry. It's about bringing in the state and locals to sure, ensure that they have the same information. Uh, to give you an example, if there's a seizure of fentanyl in Kansas, 
for instance, where did that fentanyl come from? It came across the southwest border. So as we continue to flatten out the information and figure out where and how that, that uh, fentanyl crossed the southwest border, we can start to put the logistics together, not only in Mexico, but the transnational criminal organization that's operating in the U.S. So it's about putting all the pieces together, identifying those choke points, and going after those choke points where it makes sense. That, that's why we work very closely with our Mexican colleagues and are also looking at the weapons and the money and taking, those fo and taking that off the playing field as well. Hi, Gabrielle Parrish with KVOA. So what is the most common way Sergio's cartel is able to smuggle fentanyl through the Tucson sector of the border? Uh, right here. It's right here in Nogales at the ports of entry. Uh, in vehicles, mostly small loads, pills, mostly pills. So 90% of the seizures that we're seeing across the southwest border happen at ports of entry, 44% right here at this port. Hey, uh, John, 13 News in Tucson. Uh, I'm just curious, about a month ago, I came down here to Nogales. Uh, the Arizona Attorney General and uh, um, Congressman uh, Gallego came down. They wanted to... Uh, open up some funds to get some more fentanyl detecting uh, systems out there. Is there any plan for those here with this, uh, with this new um, initiative? And so we, we would be happy to show you that the, the non-intrusive uh, technology that we have uh, here uh, in Nogales, Maripo uh, Mariposa as well, a large scale, uh, we're screening uh, approximately 50 percent of all cargo coming through our port of entry in Mariposa. Uh, we did get additional funds in 2024 to continue to expand our NII footprint across the southwest border. I think uh, the thing that uh, goes untold is we have non-intrusive technology at all of our ports of entry. We are screening. What we're trying to do is screen more cargo. That's but one piece of the, the tool or one tool in the toolbox that we've been talking about today. So, uh, yes, we are going to continue to deploy it. We're going to look at artificial machine learning to be a force multiplier for our agents and officers, and we will continue to look at it, technology, deploy it uh, as funds become available.